Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Propaganda Castle with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Today we're talking minds. Yes, indeed, minds. Apparently, someone wanted to tell me I've sort of been thinking about it, but I mean, I think I might have done it once, but I suppose I could always do it again. Since, I don't know, I guess people don't want to go for all the different Propaganda Castle layers. But overall, the trick to using minds is basically understanding to an extent how your opponent moves. I mean, that means I know, read the map. Sort of video did on it, sort of to an extent helps it. But I mean, overall, sort of consider a what type of minds you're using, and you know what sort of your pony up against, and then you know, finally, just you know, consider the map as well. Overall, minds are sort of just you know going. If you sort of imagine a straight line between your two opponents, based on some of the more important points, laying the minds in that general area for example is pretty good. So, for example, imagine here, he boop, sort of that way. I mean, this for example is just a pretty good area to sort of lay down a mine in. Roads are also pretty good areas to mine by as a rule of thumb, simply because, you know, vehicles are like to drive over them. Though, of course, we're not, if you're talking anti-personnel mines, you don't want to put them down in most cases. So, over there, you know, a few sort of guidelines. Another sort of little trick is seeing just don't lay them down in too obvious places. Your opponents more likely to spot them. I mean, just sort of consider splitting out a bit more randomly, because that, like, more... <laughs> the way they're more likely also just going to be missed and also more likely you know you might also just hit something because your opponent just didn't anticipate it at all I mean again the more obvious space your opponent's going to more likely see through it just grenade or just try and drive around to avoid the mine so in that regard you know just spreading out a few mines for the cheaper you know 30 nations mines which the Oba Commanders, the Soviets and the Americans and the British back to <laughs> in fact factions except the Wehrmacht I mean you can generally that way you should do a lot to slow down infantry assaults and tank assaults and that's generally where a lot of you know the mines because actually deal any damage are really good since they can pretty much break up an armored assault by damaging the engine making the tanks a lot more uh, well yet easier to deal with for you to tank against tanks and infantry and that's really an important thing to your mind when you're using mines you also consider again what you sort of imagine you're going up against early on in the game obviously it's infantry but as the game sort of progresses you're thinking tanks and in that regard you know you really just want to stop them in particular as you get bigger tanks and for example if you're know your opponent's going for Tiger Ace, laying down a lot of mines could do you a lot of good because as soon as that tank hits a mine it's going to be a lot more easy for you to deal with so in that regard you know positioning the mines in that regard is you know pretty good and again sort of consider sort of slightly denser but not too dense I mean you don't want mines to be going off against each other <clears throat> but say you know again we sort of got this situation a mine here mine then maybe mine here could for example do a lot there to slow down an assault mines here would also be pretty good so you know again if you got the cheap mines just consider laying down as many as possible also the idea is to keep them within watch your units I mean sure mines in the fight you don't necessarily have to but it's particularly the sort of like you know in the main combat so you want to be under watch the opponent has a harder time actually you know disarming the mines and dealing with the mines so that is you know also a pretty good tip as for stuff like S mines you know just Put them right in front of you, but don't want your opponent to be going. You're right in front of you on lines, cover important points. Another trick with S mines, by the way, is to use them to you know sneak up units behind your enemy lines and then lay down S mines in the treat path. So, again, for example, here, if you sort of imagine for the reasons this act is so player, this variant player trick would be to move all the way up through here and lay down S mines around here. So, any units trying to retreat through here, maybe even some here, would then run through the S mines because S mines are really good at wiping retreating units. They are pretty damn good at it. They're also good at sort of dealing with the new sort of trying to rash and they're not paying attention. They can do a lot of damage. At the same time, S mines are more obvious, but even that can serve, you know, good purpose. If you just place them in front of your lines, you have to be mindful that they have to be within the watch of your other units so they can actually cover it against engineers. But if you can do that, I mean, you can, they can even spot them and send other troops through them, but then you just try and fire explosives into the S mines, setting off them, killing your opponent's troops that way. And in theory, you can even sneak in some telemines because some players like to rush vehicles through them. So in theory, you could sneak in a telemine so that way when they try to rush that light tank through it or whatever they're doing, they then risk setting off the tank. So that's another little sneaky trick there for you to consider. You know, mixing and matching mines in that little manner. As for the larger anti-tank mines, you know, which are a bit tricky to set off. I mean, at the same time, you know, consider again more specific vehicle paths. You know, where would you drive your tank? Lay down a Tela mine there, or Regal mine, or the M20 mine there. That can generally do the trick. If possible, though, of course, keep them within range of your anti tank weapons that can take advantage of the severe damage, or in some cases, direct immobilization. It's course, you can that way finish off the prey before it can get away. In that regard, you know, have to be a bit more careful with how you place your Tela mines because, A, they're, of course, much more valuable to just sweep up, but at the same time, you actually need to be able to exploit the damage you're doing unless you're sort of dealing with light vehicles, in which case they will most likely just get blown to bits. 
But overall, just get as many mines as you can down there. And again, just consider the map, consider the opponent's movements. And, you know, <clears throat> also be careful around your own mines. Sometimes you've just had them set off there, so that's also very important. But again, you know, just consider there, have some of the more specific purposes, but also just lay down some randomly. If, again, they're the cheaper mines. And S mines, again, are really cheap, so just, you know, don't be afraid to throw them down here and there. They're also a pretty good way of just, you know, if you're dealing with infiltrators, lay down some S mines in front of the entrances. The unit infiltrates will set off the S mines and uh, most likely get wiped, or at least be pretty much combat inoperable. So hopefully these little sort of thoughts and tips will help you get a lot more out of your mines. And of course flare trip mines in that regard can be used in perimeters. And of course that's another just mining the perimeter of points. When they try to grab it, boom, stuff goes up. I should also actually also suggest mines behind cover. Your opponent's laid down some cover. Mine his side of the cover. Of course not S mines, that's going to be too obvious. But say other mines for you. So the allies, the Wokuman West, can also catch off your opponent in a bad spot. So those are sort of uh, a lot of little thoughts and tricks you can sort of use to get the most out of mines so will get the most effective use of the mines. But overall, mines win wars. And as a rule of thumb, if you can get down mines, that is good. So really, just if you're not using mines now, begin using them. Begin using them. And again, Soviets, Oberkommando Vest, Brits, overall the ones are probably the easiest to use mines with because they're just the, easiest to the best mines in a sense. The 30 munition mines which just so much more flexible and, you know, again, just cheap. For their cost, and you can just you know lay down a whole bunch of them and ruin your opponent's day. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe to the friends, share it with everyone. If you like what I do, do consider donating or pledging on Patreon. Links in the video description. And of course, all thanks to all my Patreon supporters, without which this episode would be possible. So thank you all, and see you all tomorrow for another exciting video of some sort. Cheers.